most welcome everybody. God bless you and God favor you. Um, wherever you are, it's a blessing to have you. It's a blessing that you join us live. Every time we are preaching the word of God, the word of truth. Thank you so much. My name is Titi Eagles. I am the lead pastor, Eagles Dominion House International. Um, we are here in Nairobi, Kenya, Nairobi City Centre. So when you come to the CBD of Nairobi, uh, just locate Mfangana Street. So when you come to Mfangana Street, Mfangana Street is after Moy Avenue, uh -huh, after the other street, then Mfangana Street. So when you come to Mfangana Street, um, you will see Equity Bank. Equity Bank that is housed by NAT headquarters or NAT house. Right opposite Equity Bank, right at the entrance, you will see a tall building, right opposite um, Sunbeam Shopping Complex. That's where we are. So when you enter the building, you come up just to fifth floor. That's where we are. God bless you and God favor you. Today, I'm speaking about redemption by light. Redemption by light. God has put in us to speak about light in this month of August and uh, we are committed to do the will of the Father. We are committed to do the will of God. And um, God has been good to us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we break the bread that came down from heaven, we pray for grace. We pray for your presence. Let your mercies be upon us. Spirit of God, we appreciate your ministry. We appreciate your work in this service. We pray that you have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I'm speaking about redemption by light today. Um, I'm stealing the introduction just to show you who is light or what is light. Why, what do we mean by this light? So um, we've been reading from the book of Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 has been our lead scripture from verse 13. Bible talks about Jesus and, and leaving Nazareth, he went and dwelt in Capernaum by the sea in the country of Zebulun and Naphtali. Jesus. Mm -hmm. He left Nazareth. He went and dwelt in Capernaum by the sea in the country of Zebulun and Naphtali. But you need to know something about this country of Capernaum. Um, Zebulun and Naphtali. That was spoken verse 14. That was that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be brought to pass. 15. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali in the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, of the people um, who are not of Israel. That is the Gentiles. Um, yeah. The people who sat or dwelt enveloped in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the land and shadow of death, light has dawned. Um, yesterday we saw um, who is Zebulun, who is Naphtali. And I, I, would argue to, I would urge you to go to that message if you didn't hear about it, about the concept of light. The concept of light. I want you to take time and listen and watch and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And therefore, from this we understand that Zebulun and Naphtali, they lived in Capernaum, those lands of Capernaum. And they sat in darkness. But the moment Jesus went and dwelt in Capernaum, these people that sat in darkness saw light. So Jesus is the light. Jesus is this light. And the moment when Jesus comes to their dwelling, when Jesus came to their place where they lived, then they saw light. Bible talks about verse 16. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. The people who sat or dwelt in darkness have seen a great light. This darkness was so bad that it had enveloped them. They were so much enveloped in darkness. Zebulun and Naphtali and the Gentiles that lived in Galilee 
watch this they were so much enveloped by darkness that nothing was working for them I told you that Zebulun the blessing of Zebulun by his father in the book of Genesis was that he was to be a trader he was to dwell in the ports he was to work um, in shipping seafaring that was his place and Zebulun means the dwelling of honor but right now it's no longer a dwelling of honor Zebulun is enveloped by darkness it is when Jesus came and dwelt in Capernaum that these people saw a great light mm. redemption by light Jesus redeems Zebulun Jesus redeems Naphtali by light because he is light mm -hmm. so the people who sat or who are enveloped in darkness have seen a great light and for those who sat in the land and shadow of death but that is not how they were before this land was blessed before this land carried the blessing of God these guys were traders Naphtali the, the blessing of Naphtali was let Naphtali be like a door or deer that is set free they were brave men they were men of war they were wrestlers they were the men that were in the intelligence and the, and the armed forces of Israel but after a long time darkness covers them darkness envelops them and Jesus comes and dwells in the midst and brings redemption and the Bible a best record by saying the people that sat in darkness people that were enveloped by darkness saw a great light people that were live people that lived in the shadow of death the land there was so much death happening to them but you know what when light showed up there was redemption from darkness there was redemption from death there was redemption for Zebulun for Naphtali and the Gentiles that lived in Galilee redemption by light now having said that I want to take the book of Genesis chapter 45 Genesis 45 I'm speaking about redemption by light please remember to share remember to comment to like and you know to subscribe on our YouTube channel Titi Eagles and God will be good to you Genesis 45 share this broadcast be a blessing yes be a blessing to somebody share to people share to friends let somebody know that we are alive let um let, may you be a channel by which god is going to bless his people by this word reaching them all right genesis 45 verse 10 genesis 45 verse 10 you shall dwell in the land of goshen and you shall be near to me you and your children mm. Mm -hmm. you shall dwell in the land of Goshen and you shall be near to me you and your children your children's children your flocks and your herds and all that you have there verse 11 I will provide for you lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty for there are still five years of famine joseph this is where the sons of jo joseph i mean the sons of jacob have come to egypt and later they learn that joseph is the governor joseph is the one in charge of the land after Pharaoh's second in command and Joseph invites his family 
because it was a, t a season and a time of famine. There was famine in the land, all over the world. And Joseph invites his family from Canaan and they come to Egypt. And in Egypt, Pharaoh allocates them a good land, a good pasture land in Egypt. And the place is called Goshen. So Goshen is the place where Jacob and his sons dwelt, where Israel dwelt. Watch this. So Israel lives in Goshen. They are so comfortable. They are so much provided because their brother, their son is the prime minister. They are well provided. They have all that they need. They have water. They have food. The land is good. There is pasture for their cattle. Now, Goshen means a land or a place of plenty and comfort. Goshen means a place or a land of plenty and comfort. So they are enjoying comfort. They are enjoying plenty. They've just come from Canaan where there is no food. And God has brought them. He has given them a land. Goshen. Ah. A nation is given a land in another nation. Oh. And they dwell in Goshen. A land or a place of plenty and comfort. Watch this. So they lived in a place of plenty. A place of comfort. But there, the Bible says there arose a king. There arose another pharaoh that never knew Joseph. So after many years of comfort. After many years of plenty. Every pharaoh that died. They knew the story of Joseph and what Joseph had done to them. But after many years, there arose a king that had nothing to do with Joseph. He did not Joseph in the book of Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1 verse 8. The Bible says, the Bible says, now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. They were living well. They were enjoying life. They were multiplying. Their number had grown. Do you know why? Because they lived in a place of plenty and comfort. That's the meaning of Goshen. But it came to pass that there arose a king that who never knew Joseph. And he said to his people, look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. They lived in Goshen. The population of Israel grew beyond that of the Egyptians because the king is saying look the people of the children of Israel are more uh, the, the children of Israel are more and mightier than we now I want to show you the number of the people that came to Egypt there were 70 when Joseph invites them when Joseph, the prime minister, invites his father and his family, Jacob, they were only 70. But they were given a good land called Goshen. And in Goshen, my goodness, I want, thank you, Jesus. Redemption by light. They were only 70. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventy 70 in Goshen. 
Genesis 45, 10, when they began to dwell in Goshen, they were only 70 in number. But watch this. After many years, because of the land they were given or allocated, Goshen, I've told you, it means a land or a place of plenty and comfort. It was a place of plenty and comfort over the years. Over the years, the population of Israel became more than that of Egypt. While in Egypt, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The blessing of God upon them was too much. And therefore, their numbers grew day by day, year by year, until they became more and mightier in Egypt. And this king, when he came, when he rose to power and became the king of Egypt, the Pharaoh, in that time, he never knew Joseph. And he said, guys, have you seen, have you checked around these guys of Israel? They are more than us in terms of population. Number two, they are mightier than us. And he says, another nation, another foreign nation can rise to fight us and they can join them and fight us in our own land and displace us. He said, what do we do now? So let's begin to afflict them. Let's um, recruit them into forced labor. Let's make them work with vigor so that we can reduce their number and destroy their oh uh, are you here so this pharaoh comes up with a plan mm. so the rising of this king it meant something it meant that now darkness is beginning to cover the children of Israel in Goshen You remember when Moses is about to be born? At that time when Moses is being born, male children, all the babies that were male, they died. But God preserved the life of Moses. So they began to go through affliction. They began to go through persecution. Now watch this. They never changed the land they never moved from Goshen to another land but darkness began to cover Goshen darkness comes upon them and now they are afflicted because when darkness covers you it empowers the devil to do his wickedness mm. I am talking of a people, a nation that was doing well, was growing well. Everything was okay. Everything was fine. They enjoyed the peace of the land. They enjoyed plenty. They were comfortable. Comfortable. The word is comfort. Goshen was a place. Goshen was a place of plenty and comfort. In the place of plenty and comfort, darkness comes in. And they begin to cry. They begin to cry to God. So we can say like this. We can say this way. That the same people. Uh -huh, watch this. The same people who sat. In a place of plenty. And comfort. They now sat in darkness. The same guys. Who for many years. Sat in a place of plenty and comfort they now sit in a place of darkness they now sat in darkness if we go by matthew 4 13 to 16. the people that enjoy once enjoyed plenty the people that once enjoyed comfort they now sat in darkness Babies are killed. Every male child dies. The devil is destroying the seed. Dark 
darkness has covered them. All of a sudden, the land that was a land of comfort, there is weeping because male children are dying. They are being killed. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know who I am talking to. When I've spoken about Goshen and the children of Israel, they only came 70 in number. 70. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 60. 70. But after many years, their numbers grew more than of Egyptians. And they became more mightier than Egyptians. The king had noticed that they are more mightier. They are mightier than us. Ah. They are mightier than us. Do you know why they are mightier? Because you know Zebulun is around. Naphtali is around. They are growing in their tribes. And Naphtali, intelligence, armed forces. So they were strong guys. The king says they are mightier than us. What do we do? We need to counter them. We need to know what to do. I'm talking of people. I'm talking to you. That you don't know what is happening right now with your life. It's our month of light. And there's going to be redemption. This light redeems. I say this light redeems. That is why when Jesus came and dwelt in Capernaum. In the land of Zebulun and Naphtali. There was redemption. There was Zebulun was redeemed. Naphtali was redeemed. The Gentiles in Galilee were redeemed. Bible says they saw a great light. Light dawned on them. Watch this. They cried. Israel was afflicted. Israel was oppressed. And they cried to God for a long time. What do I mean for a long time? Because when this king comes up in chapter 1, in chapter 2, Moses is born. So in the same timing, when a king that never knew God, I mean Joseph, sorry, came into power, all right? It is at the same time when Moses is born. Now Moses lives in Egypt in the palace for 40 years. They suffered for 40 years. Moses kills somebody, runs away, spends another 40 years. So for 80 good years, darkness was the language in Goshen. For 80 good years in Goshen, they were op it was oppression. It was weeping. It was crying. Things were not working for them. I'm speaking about redemption by light. And Moses, when he is 40 years, when he kills a man and buries him, Pharaoh hears about it. And a word which is Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is looking for Moses. And Moses has to escape. Moses escapes to the wilderness of Midian. And there, after 40 years, taking care of the sheep of his father in law Jethro, he encounters light. <laughs> uh, in the book of Exodus, chapter 3, Moses encounters light. I want to preach to somebody. Can I have some sound now? Moses encounters light. It is only when Moses encounters light that Moses becomes an agent of light. The children of Israel, they are to be redeemed. I don't just want to preach a good message. I want to reach your heart. I want to reach you. I want to reach you. Because the children of Israel have lived in Goshen for the longest and they are enjoying life. 
is a land, a place of plenty and comfort. But watch this. Something happens. What? That there arose a king that never knew Joseph. I don't know what's happening with your life today. I don't know who you are before. And I don't know how your life is now. I don't know how things are around you. But the Bible says that they cried, the children of Israel cried to God. They cried to God. And there is redemption by light. Because Moses encounters light. Moses encounters light. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Moses encounters light. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. As Moses leads the little flock that he had, he goes to the backside of the desert. He goes to the west side of the desert. And he comes to the mountain of God, even Mount Horeb. And there, Moses encounters Jesus. Moses encounters light. He sees a burning bush. That burning bush is a representation, symbolizes light, symbolizes Christ. And chapter 3 verse 7 of Exodus, the Bible says, And the Lord said, The Lord spoke from the burning bush. I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. The Lord is speaking to you today. And the Lord is saying, Listen to me, son. Listen to me, daughter. Listen to me, man of God. Listen to me, businessman. Listen to me, entrepreneurs. Listen to me, captains of interest. Listen to me. The Lord is saying, I have surely seen your affliction, your oppression. He says, I have surely seen the oppression of my people. By the time God appears to Moses, by the time Moses encounters light, Israel has undergone oppression for more than 80 years. 80 years of oppression. A child is born under oppression and they lived in oppression. A man that is 80 years old is a man that is too old in meaning and they've given birth to children and their children to children. Generations came. They were born into oppression. Generations are born into oppression. I don't know what you are born into. There are men and women that are born into oppression. Born into sicknesses and diseases. That this sickness flows in our family. My grandfather died of this. My father died of this. And now I have it. And one of my or two of my children are going through the same. And when Moses encounters light, the Lord says, I have surely seen the oppression of my people. God has surely seen your oppression, the oppression in your family.
some of you have to fly overseas for medications some of you the drugs you take per week they are in thousands all your money goes there there are people that have sold all the family properties for medication some of you have settled in sicknesses in that sickness in that condition in that predicament you call it my my sickness my cancer today there is redemption by light there is redemption by light Moses encounters light Moses encounters light Rabo Shakabaraba Thank you Lord I have surely seen the oppression of my people What God is confirming is that my children that are now sitting in darkness I have surely seen their oppression my people that are struggling in business my children that are struggling in education my children that are struggling in their health my children that are struggling in their careers my children that are struggling in the marketplace I have surely seen the oppression says for I know their sorrows I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows God is aware of your sorrows let me say it this way light is aware of your sorrows When people come to visit you, the only thing you show them is this an MRI that was taken at this hospital. This is an X-ray taken in this place. I have gone here for treatment. I have seen this doctor. I have seen this physician. I have seen this psychologist. Our son is in a, in a, a story is a story of sorrows some of you some media houses have covered your sorrows and up to now nothing has happened you have encountered great people and there's no help God is telling Moses I'm aware of their sorrows God knows about your sorrows God knows about that sickness light is aware of that disease that infirmity that struggle you have battled with cancer light is aware you put up businesses not once not twice not thrice it's not working you do everything necessary actually you've studies you, you, you've studied about business but when you when you begin one it doesn't work it doesn't work doesn't work how your grandfather died is how your father died and you're in the same condition God is aware of your sorrows and the Bible says verse 8 so I have come down to deliver them light is confessing with Moses I have come down 
to deliver them. I have come to redeem them, to deliver them. It is redemption by light. I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. I don't know the kind of the hand that has been inflicting your life. The hand of the Egyptians. Some of you, you need to be redeemed by light. This light redeems from the hand of cancer, from the hand of, of sicknesses and diseases, from infirmities, from the hand of poverty. There are some people, you've gone out of the country, but you are brought back. Some of you, you are out there and you thought when you got there, things will work for you. The devil is a bad devil. One time, around eight years ago, things were not working. And I got an invitation to go and preach in Zambia. And I had to travel by bus from Nairobi to Dar es Salaam, Dar es Salaam to the border of Tanzania and Zambia. And then from the border all the way to Lusaka. It was a journey of almost three days. Yeah. Sleeping on the road. But you know what? When I thought things are going to work on arrival, Lusaka in Zambia. My host bishop switched off his phone. I didn't have even a coin. Even to buy a banana. Even to ease myself. In the municipal toilet the toilet owned by the county council I didn't have a penny and my host went off switched off his phone I came from trouble running away from trouble thinking that God now has come through oh my goodness it was not easy I don't know where you are right now You cannot manage life. You don't know what to do. These guys had prayed and called on God until they are. Ah, they us. Moses and Kaunda's light. And God says, I'm aware of their oppression. I'm aware, I'm aware of their afflictions. I'm aware of their sorrows. God is aware of your sorrows. God is aware of the oppression that you're going through. God is aware of the affliction. And God says, I have come down to deliver you. And I declare it's redemption by light. John chapter 3 verse 14 is a proof that Moses encountered light. John chapter 3 verse 14, I want us to pray. Three fourteen. Holy Spirit, you deserve all the praise, Jesus. Jesus, you deserve all the praise. 314, the Bible says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, that serpent that Moses lifted, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That serpent was Jesus. Verse 15 says that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
<laughs> when you go to the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verse 9, in that place where Israel now in the wilderness where they were, there were so many serpents, poisonous ones, poisonous snakes. And God gives Moses an, an instruction make a serpent of bronze. Lift it up on a post. Whoever is beaten by the post that's next, let them watch that serpent. And as they see it, they leave. They will not die. And Jesus comes and says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. In other words, the one that Moses lifted up in the wilderness, when the, the children of Israel were dying of poison from snakes, he was Jesus, the light. So it's a proof that Moses encountered light at the burning bush. And the same light redeemed the children of Israel and delivered them out of Egypt. The same light that redeemed the children of Israel the same light is redeeming your children. The same light is redeeming your business. The same light is redeeming your empire. The same light is redeeming your career. The same light is redeeming your marriage. The same light is redeeming your calling. The same light is redeeming the gift that God has deposited in the inside of you. The same light is redeeming the treasures of God. The same light is redeeming you out of darkness. You lost your place. Because darkness displaces men. When darkness covers men, when men sit in darkness, they lose their place. But light redeems and light restores you to your place. You are going to be a beneficiary of this light. I want to pray with you before my, because my time is up. Stretch your hands here. Stretch your faith. Listen to me carefully. I preach the message of light to you. And I bring to you light. And I declare where you are right now. Distance is not a barrier. Light is redeeming your life. I declare, let there be redemption by light. Let there be redemption by light. I saw something. I saw darkness that is so deep rooted in your life. So the rooting is so deep. Like the children of Israel, the oppression was so deep rooted. It was not an oppression of one year. It was not a darkness of two years or five years. It was not a darkness of one decade or five decades. More than eight decades. Something that is so deep rooted. There is a sickness, an infirmity that is so deep rooted. Deep rooted. It goes to generations. But light is a brooding. Hey. There is redemption by light. I release redemption by light. into trouble you got yourself into trouble and right now you're in darkness you don't know what to do redemption by light is your portion your children are in darkness your marriage is not working you used to enjoy money you used to enjoy plenty you used to enjoy comfort you knew comfort comfort was your portion but today in the name 
name of Jesus, I declare redemption by light is your portion, is your portion, is your portion. Anything that the Father of heaven has not planted in your life, be uprooted now, be uprooted now, be uprooted now. I declare redemption by light. Redemption by light. Your business will be redeemed by light. The work of your hands, your finances, your children, your marriage. Be redeemed. Your ministry be redeemed by light. Oh. Oh. That is saying, I have seen your oppression. I have seen your affliction. But I have come down to redeem you by light. This is your time. This is your time. Redemption by light. Redemption by light. Ah, healing is flowing in your body right now. There is a touch of healing right now. Put your hand where you're ailing. Put your hand where there's pain. Be healed now. Be healed now. If it's a place you cannot touch, just touch your heart. Be healed now. Be healed. I declare redemption by light. Redemption from that infirmity. Redemption by light. I'm seeing somebody what has brought you down is depression 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 has has brought you down depression depression is a product of darkness deliverance is your portion redemption by light be redeemed from depression in the name of Jesus I cannot finish by giving you a chance to give your life to Jesus. Redemption by light. Yes, you're watching me. Listen to me right now. And you're so much in witchcraft. You're so much in witchcraft. You believe so much in consorting these people. You believe so much in divination. You believe in you must sell your body have a living you believe that I was born again mm. I was born a lesbian darkness darkness you sitting in darkness you are deep in drugs even if it's your child you are standing in for join me even if it's a brother or a friend you are standing in for you know they are lost in Sodomy, what we call sodomy today. Gazing. Lesbianism. Come on. I declare redemption by light. Redemption by light. From darkness. Let this light dawn on you now. Let this light dawn on your body now. Let this light dawn on your finances. Let this light dawn on the work of your hands. Let this light dawn on your marriage. In the name of Jesus Christ. Light. If you're ready to give your life to Jesus, say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Come into my life. Be my Lord and be my savior. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, you are born again. Your sins are forgiven. Your past is gone. If you are backslidden and you pray that prayer, it is well. Your name is written in the book of life now. You're safe. 
you're preserved. Your sins are forgiven. Oh, he doesn't remember. Yes, he doesn't remember. Even if you killed, he, does, he forgave you. You're forgiven. You're washed of the blood of Jesus. You're made white. That's slow. You're going to heaven. Yes, you will see him who died for you. My name is Titi Eagles. I am the lead pastor. Eagles Dominion House International. If you just give your life to Jesus and you're within Nairobi, or you want to join us, or come for prayer, there's a number down there. You can call that number for direction. You can call that number for prayer. Anything you want to ask God for, call that number. You will get me direct. We are here in Nairobi CBD, Nairobi City Center. I welcome you to church. Sunbeam Shopping Complex is the building where we are in, fifth floor. We are along Fangano Street. Fangano Street in Nairobi City Center, Nairobi, Kenya. Right opposite Equity Bank. Come, fifth floor, this is where we are. Come, let's be blessed together. I leave you with this word. Redemption by light is your portion. Keep speaking it. Keep confessing it. Keep declaring it to your children. Keep speaking it to your business. Redemption by light. In Jesus' name. Shalom. Shalom. Bye-bye. God bless you. Amen.